All right, Sunday evening. We are rapidly running out of Sunday evening, and we're also running out of month as we go into later on tonight. We could be seeing the potential for some more problems heading our way. Chances of rainfall toward about the end of this next upcoming week, but otherwise doesn't really look like too much of a problem. Pardon me, I'm not trying to do anything in the way of shuffling anybody off, but unfortunately we've got a website that I need, and it is doing its best to foil me. Does anybody really hate those small delete keys? Because this keyboard drives me up the wall because usually a big backspace key comes in very handy on that. So nice to be able to see that on there. All right, I think that's it. Yes, okay, we are good to go. All right, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. In for Todd Highslip, which is our, he's our usual weekend meteorologist, but because of some fruit basket upset schedule issues, uh, we've got Chip Chapman off tomorrow for Monday for the first day of May. And so Mr. Todd has graciously agreed to fill in for very early tomorrow morning. So if you'd like to get the current forecast, uh, please drop by WDEF.com slash weather and watch the morning program. We'll have more about weather, traffic, Kay and Dave, depending on uh, which one of those two are working tomorrow. They'll have all the news for you. And Brian Armstrong will have an update on sports. I apologize for the glare. We're working on that, but just try to ignore that and we'll keep you updated regardless of the amount of light that is pouring through here. So thanks a lot for joining us. We'll take a look at what's going on uh, into the semi-near future in just a little bit. Taking a look at our weather picture of the day for Sunday, and this will also be for Monday, thanking very much our main one of our news main anchors, uh, Andrew Harrison, for giving us a nice view of downtown from the Walden Club. That's our West Shore ho home weather window picture of the day for Sunday. So thank you very much, Mr. Andrew, for getting that to us. If you've got pictures, send them to us. We want to see them. We want to do more than see them. We want to show them to everybody and put them in the big monitor, which we do at 6 and 10 p or 6 and 11 p.m. I'm still having trouble getting used to Eastern time around here. So if you'd like to get your picture up there and tell your friends about it and become our next West Shore Home Weather Window Picture of the Day, drop them to our social media pages. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook are the best ways to get a hold of us. You don't have to use your name. Same thing again for emailing us. You don't have to use your name, but give us a description about what you were looking at and where you happen to be. So that would come in very handy up there to go ahead and send those in to us. And we've got kind of a dearth of pictures right now, so we could really uh, use some help on that. From Lee Point, traffic moving along pretty well on 153. Very light traffic over into and around the area of Highway 64 going over the top of that on the overpass from Chattanooga Red Wolves Stadium looking back toward the 7524 junction somewhere beyond the glare out there and great weather for traveling for tonight no major problems being seen in the way of any rain or anything else well there is a little bit of rainfall but not really seeing a major amount at this point so let's see if we can get to downtown the iris levels were kind of playing up earlier see if we can get there okay not bad uh very dry decent evening you can see some of the lights up on top of lookout mountain out there a great night for stargazing no question about that if you can get out and uh, take a look around because it's really great out there for tonight and we'll have several days of good stargazing weather so you might catch one or two of the leftover lyrid meteor shower uh, meteor streaking through the atmosphere it'll be rare but it's still possible that you could get that and then also again seeing good conditions into the rest of the week for everything the next chance of rainfall way off toward thursday we'll have more about that coming up here in just a little bit let's take a look and see what's going on with the temperatures out there very much on the mild side very cool actually cool and dry 56 at the airport very dry humidity for this time of the evening light northwesterly winds looking good tomorrow the chattanooga lookouts are off so there will be no ball game as we get into the next series coming up on tuesday we'll have the forecast for you coming up uh, on that a little bit later on let's give you a, just a quick peek of the forecast for those who can't stick around for the entire thing it is going to be windy in the next several days as a cold front slices on through from western canada that's going to be doing a very good job of keeping our temperatures 
well below normal not seeing any frost but it is going to be brisk with numbers back in the upper 60s typically for this time of the year we should be in the mid to upper 70s and we're going to be about a category below that for the next few days we'll be warming up as we go toward the end of the week as our next system arrives we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit be prepared for some chop on the roadways as we see winds not quite to wind advisory territory but by the time we hit about tuesday that's where we may see the potential of some wind advisories out there and in those mountain and big hill passes we may see some problems out there so be prepared for some chop on the highway especially again for north south travel as these winds will be coming in from the west so please keep that in mind if you're going to be traveling we do have some minimal chances of showers out there uh, we don't have a lot on Titan radar for right now. And again, this is about 20 till 10 Eastern time. It'll be a lot different if and when you check this overnight. So for right now, looking at the dwindling showers right about I-40 back to around portions of Eastern Tennessee. And as of right now, it's cold enough several thousand feet up to where the computer that drives the radar is showing uh, the potential of some areas of snowfall mixed in there but again as it drops down toward the surface I doubt we're going to see anything in the way of actual snowfall uh, anytime soon it looks very much on the dry side for tonight so no problems with anything involving winter weather uh, Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge again the higher elevations back toward Asheville that's where we see the snow higher up but as it gets lower and lower it gets warmer down toward the lower sections of the atmosphere the air is thicker it retains more heat and then that is where the snow turns into rainfall so if we have any rainfall reaching the surface with some of those humidities out there it's very doubtful that we're getting a lot of raindrops at all at this time so hopefully we'll get something out of this might help settle the dust a little bit uh, but beyond that we're just not really looking at too much uh, in the way of concerns for right now so definitely some good news here's the way the situation shapes up storm system with the low pressure at the surface well over toward the area of chesapeake bay the delmarva peninsula in that area and that is again going to be scooting its way up to the northeast the upper level low which is several thousand feet upwards driving this system is passing the great lakes more showers here and some of that rainfall that you see here has been rotating around this system coming in from the northwest off the great lakes that's where our moisture is coming from tonight and we're going to continue to see a sprinkle or two but really i think that there's just not that much out there for tonight next best chance of rainfall several days away we'll get that in the seven day forecast coming up here in just a little bit so for right now storm systems days away and high pressure doing a good job of keeping things very mild cooler than mild actually looking at numbers back in the 60s for highs it's really nice to be in an area of the country that has a springtime when I was back in Memphis for several years it was from winter to summer just almost like that and very nice to be able to have at least that buffer zone between winter and summer between those extremes out there because Memphis just goes with that humidity and heat just right into it April into May you're lucky for the Memphis in May festival to not have thunderstorms coming on through but then it can also be just hot as blazes out there as we see the heat begin to increase all right let's run the numbers and give you an idea as to what's going on for tonight overnight again those chances of showers such as they are are going to be gone pretty much way back up northeast of bristol in virginia and the winds coming in from the southwest pretty much on the light side and will continue that way through tomorrow that's where that passing storm system gets a little closer to us so the winds will come in a little breezier and that will stick around as we go into uh, tomorrow evening and overnight into around tuesday we could be seeing some winds 10 to 20 miles per hour early tuesday morning and then by early on Tuesday afternoon, pleasant, but still way below normal once again for the kids coming home from school. But chances of rainfall just not happening at this point. There's just really, excuse me, little if anything happening out there for right now. Severe weather chances also bupkis on that. We're just not getting anything at this time for Monday, right on in through Tuesday and into around Wednesday. There is a slight possibility, if you can see that way over here, of a uh, just generic thunderstorms that's going to be about it beyond that it is just not really happening at this time bishop bob nice to see you uh thanks for dropping by for the 
netcast tonight. Say hello to Mr. Josh. Miss working with you guys. Hope everything is good back in Memphis. Uh, nice to see you online for uh, checking in, and thank you very much for doing so on that. Bob and Josh Sports, one of the best sports broadcasts in Memphis when I was over there for uh, several years. Glad to have them on board, and they have their own uh, Internet show, so check them out if you want to there. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on well into the future. Uh, for right now, the potential for chances of rain, meh, not seeing a lot as we go toward the rest of the week. But into the weekend, we may see the potential of showers, maybe some heavier rainfall into around our area of the Tennessee River Valley. But then that scoots off and leaves us to be replaced by another system going out of the weekend and coming into Monday. So this time next week, we might be looking at some pretty sloppy conditions out there uh, once again. So definitely want to keep it tuned to News 12 for more information on that. All right, seven-day forecast in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and give you that and see what's going on because it's going to be breezy out there. I don't think we're going to get wind advisories. We're going to come very close, though, so definitely want to keep it tuned to News 12 for more. Staying mild for the next few days, close to normal on Thursday with plenty more sunshine there, but we will see a chance of showers, maybe a few thunderstorms coming on through late Thursday into around early Friday. And then we see just mainly just showers at first on Friday, but then thunderstorms possible as we go toward Saturday into Sunday. And again, temperatures very much on the cool side. The kids are going to need something to bundle up with as they head off for school uh, into the early portion of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, even kind of brisk uh, for the rest of the week, even though we see some warmer temperatures during the day. This is not shirt sleeve weather out there. Definitely want to keep them warmed up uh, as they stay safe on the way to school. So not looking too terrible out there, at least uh, for now. So hopefully it stays that way. If it doesn't, we will let you know about that. Speaking of school, we would love to be able to come to your school, whether you're a teacher or a student, but we need to be invited first. We just don't show up. It doesn't happen that way. That's kind of rude and also a little creepy in its own way. So if you'd like to invite us, go to our website for the Food City Weather in the Classroom program, wdef.com slash weather. Fill out the form. Give us an idea as to how many students we'll be talking to, what your schedule is, uh, if there's any special topics you want to have, again, the younger students, pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, we don't do a huge presentation. We might speak for 15 to 20 minutes, and then we talk about safety. We might even read a nice grade-appropriate level weather book, and hopefully that'll help them understand a little more. From about second grade upwards, that's where we start getting into the mathematics, the science of meteorology, the safety to where we show some pretty powerful videos when it comes to tornadoes roaring through places and why it is so important to learn severe weather safety now while they are still students before they become adults. There's a lot of adults out there that say, oh, I don't have to worry about anything, so why it's not going to hurt me, so why do I have to worry about it? You can't have that attitude, and that's one of the primary things we talk about. We do it, again, very science-friendly, mathematics uh, in, engage in some of that, and talk more about safety, making sure that they know where to go to when severe weather becomes an issue. So that is something that is very important, and I would like to make certain that everybody in the area is able to see a little bit more about that. Likewise, I talked to the students about the weather radio program, about how easy it is to program this, this should be in every home, every school, every business, every place of worship. It should be everywhere to let you know when severe weather is coming. And it's easy to program it. If you don't want to be bothered, if you're in like Sequatchie or around Grundy County and you don't want to know about Hamilton County, you can program in those counties and program out Hamilton. So if you don't want to be bothered for anything else except for your county alone, Cool. That's great. We can help you do that. Stop by WDEF.com slash weather for more information, and we'll be glad to help you get a little bit more details on that. Let's go ahead and wrap things up here. We're approaching uh, close to 10 o'clock, and i got to get ready for the 11 o'clock show. So for right now, again, if you're going to be doing anything outdoors, especially in the mornings, should be some great stargazing weather, but it is going to be breezy, it is going to be cooler, and it is going to be, again, some very nice days coming up. But that jacket, forget the umbrella, but take that jacket with you because you might need that. Uh, even during the afternoon when it gets breezy enough, having something to shelter yourself from that wind chill effect, and yes, that's what that is when you get cooled off. It doesn't have to be winter 
for that to happen. But when those winds are 10, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour, it cools your skin off by removing that body heat that you generate. So it's a really great idea to have that packed. Make certain the kids have something to ward off that chill. They will more than likely need it as we go throughout the course of the next several days. Find me on Facebook. You can find out more details about what is going on in regards to uh, the weather. If you'd like to email me questions, concerns, complaints, if you must, let me know. Aonic at WDEF.com. That's A-O-N-E-K. It's Polish. Don't ask me to explain it. WDEF.com slash weather for more. You can reach me through the website. You can also get our forecast available there and our weather overtime video blog as well. So fairly quiet for tonight. Chip Chapman should be back on Tuesday morning. Uh, Todd Hyslip again will be in tomorrow morning for the morning and noon show. So give him a big warm welcome tomorrow. Really great to be able to work with all these really cool people here at News 12 who are very hard working and very uh, easy to get along with. Uh, very nice to be able to be here in Chattanooga and this area to be able to work again here at News 12. Uh, very nice again to be able to have that opportunity to where I haven't had that at various places in my uh, long time coming here. So thank you very much again for the warm welcome that everybody has shown and everybody at News 12. Again, if there's a question you have or a story that you'd like to offer, let us know. Get to the website, find the email of whoever you'd like to talk to, Andrew, Emily, Dave Staley, Kay Blevins, uh, our sports department, anybody else like that. Let us know what's going on. We get our story ideas mostly from you. So if you don't send it in, we can't do anything about it, and we'd like to, uh, depending on how things work out. So if you could send us information about a story you might have, please let us know. It'd be great to be able to have that on there. All right, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onick. It is Sunday night, the last day of April. We will be heading toward May Day tonight. That'll be tomorrow, again, the first day of May, starting on a Monday, and it looks to be very nice out there. We'll bring you more information about the lookouts and about anything astronomical going on through the rest of the week. Stay tuned on air and online, and we'll keep you advised. Thanks for joining us for Sunday night's edition of Weather Overtime, and stay tuned to News 12 for a lot more coming up throughout the rest of the week. Thanks for joining us for tonight.